Hello, this is a walkthrough of the Tally Arbiter software. Tally Arbiter is free software that I've created uh, that will allow you to integrate Tally Light systems with your existing equipment. Uh, and it supports a variety of input sources like the TSL protocol, which is used by a lot of uh, broadcast switchers like Ross Carbonites. It also supports the Blackmagic ATEM models, vMix, OBS, Roland Smart Tally, uh, and then some other uh, products are coming soon. Uh, let's get started. The server here, uh, I'm actually running it on a Raspberry Pi, but uh, it's just written in Node.js, so you can run it on any platform you want. Uh, and then by default, it runs on port 4455. So when you go to the home page, this is what you'll see, just a quick splash page about the license. And then let's get right over to the settings page. And Tally Arbiter is broken into several categories. You have sources, and devices. And devices can be attached to specific sources since addresses might change per source. And then you have actions which can be uh, an outgoing webhook or you could send a TSL command uh, or anything like that. And then of course you can always name your cameras and give it a description. And then Tally Arbiter also supports connected listeners. So these would be specific software uh, that is listening to the state of the Tally Arbiter devices and then it can do something based on whether that state is in preview or program, both or neither. And so let's look at this source. So this is my Carbonite one. It's using TSL 3.1. I can edit that and I can change uh, the name, the IP address, which isn't really needed for sending TSL data from your Carbonite to your server, but it's there anyway. And then the port that you're using and whether or not it's enabled. I could also add other sources if I want, so I could choose between TSL UDP or some require TCP. Uh, I can use any of the Blackmagic ATEM models, uh, OBS Studio, vMix, or Roland Smart Tally currently. So right now though I've just got this one source. But what's nice about Tally Arbiter is that it will actually arbitrate your tally data between multiple sources. So let's say, for example, you have uh, on site, you use multiple cameras in different rooms and on different switchers, which is what we do. So we have cameras in Auditorium 1 and cameras in Auditorium 2. And sometimes in Auditorium 1, on the switcher for Auditorium 1, I might want to pull up a feed of Auditorium 2. And unless I have something in place to uh, relay that tally data to that camera, it's really only going to be connected to its Auditorium. So What's nice is that this allows you to send tally data from multiple sources up to one server, which will arbitrate whether ultimately that camera is in preview, program, both, or neither, and then relay that data to the actual camera. So you can see here I've got one source configured, and these are my cameras. I've got six of them. So I can edit a camera and give it a name and a description. If I want to enable it or disable it as a quick way to have it not follow tally data for a time if that's necessary for you. And then you can see here I've got it attached to address one on source one. And so this address field is generally a number uh, corresponding to the input number on your switcher. But you know if you're using something like OBS it might be a more of a string depending on what your name of your source is. So I've got uh, each one of these attached to my Carbonite one source. And then for actions uh, the only actions I'm using are local console output, uh, whether it's on preview or off preview, on program or off program, I've got it set to send a message. And this is really helpful for testing, so if you just want to keep a log of what was, what was going on at a certain time, it will do that. Uh, and that's just kind of custom based on your needs, but I can also add another action and choose, let's say when it comes on preview and it's on or off preview, I can say I want to send a TSL 3.1 UDP message, or I could do an outgoing webhook, uh, or even local console output as we just saw. So let's say I want to do outgoing webhook. So I want to put in my IP address, and let's just say I want to trigger like a button in Companion. So I would type in the IP address of that computer that's running Companion, and then obviously the port, and then the path. And so if I wanted to trigger a button on Companion, I'd say press slash bank slash page one button one and using the get method and I'll leave this blank because there is no post data and hit save and then anytime I were to cut to that camera it would run my button one on page one in companion and so that's pretty helpful to have that outgoing webhook 
Uh, same with the other devices. So you can have a TSL 3.1. I could say send it to this IP address on this listening port, give it this address, label, and tally number, uh, and it will send that data. So if you've got an under monitor display or something you want to have it be updated, you can do that. Um, so those are the different device actions. Let's look over here at the connected listeners. So you can see here I have four of them. Uh, two of them are actually on the same server that's running Tally Arbiter. It's running the Tally Arbiter Relay Controller, uh, which is a headless piece of software that connects to USB relays and allows you to uh, open or close a relay, which can uh, open or close a contact closure. And so my two cameras, or cameras one and two, uh, use contact closures for Tally data, and so I've got them assigned to that camera. Uh, and then anytime this camera comes on or off preview, or program, it will uh, send the appropriate, re open or close the appropriate relay. What's also nice is that I can flash any of these connected listeners. Uh, so let's say I want to get camera four's attention and he's not looking at me. If I hit flash, you'll actually see the uh, tally light on that camera flash back and forth a few times, and then it will go back to its previous tally state. So that's kind of handy if you need to get their attention. And then you can obviously reassign uh, a device at any time. If you have changed that camera's number or you've changed it here and you want it to refer to a different device, uh, you can just change it and you'll see it actually change and then show up over here that it's reassigned to a different device. So those are how the listeners work. And uh, they've got different types. So I've got Relay and Python. But let's say I want to show uh, tally data on a web page. So I can come in and I can load up the server and go to the page and let's say slash tally. So I'm going to choose my device. I'm going to say camera 6. So it's telling me, hey, camera 6, that's a Marshall CV503. If I go back to this tab, now I have uh, a listener attached of type web assigned to camera 6. Uh, and it's showing up over here that it's listening to data from camera 6. So if I were to hit flash, and I come back over here, you can see it, that's what it would look like on the tally view for uh, this. So that's what we call web tally. And that's helpful if you just want to have someone using a mobile phone or an old tablet or something like that as a tally light. So Tally Arbiter supports these three kinds currently. And so uh, the relay is a local USB relay. Uh, the Python is a Python script. And we have these running on Raspberry Pi Zeros with Blink-1 lights. Uh, and then the web tallies. And any time a connection is lost, so let's say someone closes out their connection to uh, the Arbiter server, I'll close out this tab and you'll see it shows up as a disconnected client. And this will automatically get deleted after a few minutes, but it shows you here in case you just want to be aware that that client is no longer listening to tally data. Uh, and then over here we have the log section, which just shows you anytime uh, somebody performs an action, it just keeps a running log here so you know what's going on. So now let's take a look at how we actually configure that. All right, so here's a view of how we're using Tally Arbiter at my church. Um, we have two Ross Carbonite switchers. And so in the settings here, um, I've gone in and configured a, a TSL UMD device. And you can see uh, that it's configured to send data to my Tally Arbiter server on port 9800 uh, and then I'm using UDP as the transport option. And so uh, whenever I make a switch here uh, on whether it's preview or, or program it will send that Tally data to the Arbiter server. And let me take a walk into the rack and show you where that server is. Here we have two Hitachi camera control units uh, and you can actually see that camera one there is on preview and camera two is on program. Uh, and that's being done uh, by a relay that Tally Arbiter is controlling. And so let me show you the back of the rack. You can see the back of the camera control units here. And the, they have communication ports on them where you can make the contact closure connections to signal the Tally lights. So those are just custom cables I made with uh, header adapters that plug into our relay. I've got the relay in this big black box right here. And then sitting on top of the box is the Raspberry Pi. This Pi is running the Tally Arbiter code and it's running the Tally Arbiter relay controller, 
which is connected via USB to the relay. So anytime one of those two cameras comes into preview or program, it will close or open that relay and make the connection, which will signal the tally lights. So here you can see our two cameras, the two Hitachis, and they're showing both preview and program lights. And so if I were to make a cut uh, on the switcher, you'd see them change. Basically what happens is the switcher recognizes that change and then sends that tally data over the network to the tally arbiter server, uh, which then relays it to the relay controller. And those two things happen to be running on the same Raspberry Pi, and which triggers the relay to make the contact closure to trigger the lights. So it happens the instant I hit the button, which is really handy. So that's just our two cameras that have built-in tally lights. Now let's go take a look at the two cameras that don't have built-in tally lights. So here's one of our cameras that doesn't have tally lights. It's got uh, a Raspberry Pi Zero with a Blink-1 light attached to it. And you can see right now it's in program. And so we've actually just got it kind of zip tied up here to the tripod because we remove these cameras and use them for other things week to week. Uh, but that's just running a Python script here on the Raspberry Zero, which is sitting down here on the floor. Um, and that is in constant connection with the Tally Arbiter server. And so anytime a uh, change is made on the server, it emits that socket data to the Raspberry Pi Zero, which will change the state of the light, whether it's red or green or both. It'll be yellow if it's in preview and program, or it'll turn off if it's in neither. Okay, this is a walkthrough of how you could set up your Blackmagic ATEM, whether you're using a full TVS Studio uh, or even just a mini, uh, as long as it uses the same protocol, you should be good. So uh, I'm going to show you how to set that up in Tally Arbiter. So I'm going to come over here to Tally Arbiter, and for now I'm just going to disable my existing TSL uh, device, and I'm going to say add new source, Blackmagic ATEM, I'm going to give it a name, type in the IP address, and hit save and you'll see that it's connected here to the ATEM because it's a nice green box. Now I need to go to each device and add the new source mapping so I'm going to say edit sources for camera one, add source, ATEM which is my only currently enabled source and I'm just going to say address one for this test and then I'll come in here to camera two and do the same thing add source and we'll just give it address two. So now that I've assigned those two sources if I come back to the software and make a cut you'll actually see the data show up over here uh, in real time. So uh, it's relaying that data. So if I were to come, come off of one of those two off program, I don't have any other inputs mapped to program. So if I were to take this and go to my source number three, you'll actually see uh, this turn off, but you won't see camera three go into program because it's not assigned to that source. Uh, but here's an example. So I've taken it off and now it's gone, uh, but it's still showing camera one in preview, which is correct. If I were to cut over to camera two in preview, or really this is just input two, but for this test I'm referring to it as camera two, you'll see that state. So it's really that simple to use. Tally Arbiter is doing all the work and it listens to that data. If I happen to have these cameras going into an ATEM Mini and a Carbonite at the same time, I could have both of these enabled Let's say I'm using the Carbonite for my in-house production and the ATEM is for my live stream production. Arbiter can, Tally Arbiter can actually arbitrate the uh, tally state of those cameras, those devices across the different protocols, and then ultimately tell you whether the camera is in preview or program or both, depending on where it's being used, and show that to your endpoint device. So that's just a quick example of how to use the ATEM protocol with Tally Arbiter. As usual with my projects, I've made this open source and available over on GitHub. And you can get that link in my blog post. It has a fully documented REST API if you want to automate use of Tally Arbiter outside of the GUI that I've created. And there are also step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up a Raspberry Pi Zero with OS imaging and all the libraries and scripts that you need to install and get it going. If these projects are helpful to you and your church, please let me know. I love hearing how you guys use technology to serve your church. Have a great day.